This video is about how the islands of Haida Gwaii are aligned to the harmonic frequency of light by the unique geographic geometry. The whole of physical reality, everything that we see, sense and touch, is formed out of the basic geometric harmonies or harmonics of light. And the idea that there is a fundamental geometry that underlies all matter is an idea that is well understood and widely accepted in the science of today. At all levels of scale, physical matter displays the telltale geometry of light from the smallest quantum wave form to the largest galaxies. And it'll be shown here that the landmass of Haida Gwaii is no different to a point. There's a definite and distinct geometry hidden in the layout of the land of Haida Gwaii. This is quite common in many places around the world. However, where I would suggest the Haida Gwaii stands out from the crowd, and as will be shown in this video, is not only in the amazing clarity and incredible degree of precision by which the geometry of Haida Gwaii's geography aligns to the harmonic of light, but by the fact that the actual number of geometric alignments found to date, and I'm sure there are many more awaiting discovery, is in itself considerable. There are, in fact, many, many ways the geometry of Haida Gwaii aligns to the energy of light. And just a few of the more fascinating and intriguing ones will be shown here. Think of it like this, that everything in this universe was intended here, including you, including every mosquito and every palm tree and every avocado and all of the Rocky Mountains and the oceans, that everything that shows up in the material world emanates from a source. And this source can be thought of as that which intends things into the material world. And the question here today isn't whether or not you are going to be connected to it because you couldn't be, you couldn't be listening to this program. You couldn't be processing what I'm saying here if you weren't connected to this field. This field beats your heart. This, this field of energy grows your fingernails and grows everybody else's fingernails. Max Planck was given the Nobel Prize in Physics many years ago in Stockholm for his work on the atom. He, along with Einstein, was considered to be one of the greatest scientific minds on the planet. Now these are the people who need hardcore data. They don't want to hear about hocus pocus and sorcerers and connecting to intention and all of these kind of things. It has to be something they can measure, they can see. So, here's what Max Planck had to say. As he accepted the Nobel Prize, these were his words. As a man who has devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, to the study of matter, I can tell you, as the result of my research about atoms, this much. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume, now listen to a greatest scientist on the planet, we must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Hidden within this cathedral are clues to a mystery. Something that could help answer one of humanity's most enduring questions. 
Why is the world the way it is? The 13th century masons who constructed this place had glimpsed a deep truth. And they built a message into its very walls, in the precise proportions of this magnificent cathedral. To the medieval clergy, these divine numbers were created by God. But to me, they're evidence of something else. A hidden code that underpins the world around us. A code that has the power to unlock the laws that govern the universe. As a mathematician, I'm fascinated by the numbers and patterns we see all around us. Numbers and patterns that connect everything, from fish to circles, and from our... Ground close, can we call me please, one more line decimal, sir. Together, they make up the code and that has given us the most detailed description of our world we've ever had. For centuries, people have seen significant numbers everywhere. An obsession that's left its mark in the stones of this medieval cathedral. In the 12th century, religious scholars here in Schaff became convinced these numbers were intrinsically linked to the divine. An idea that dates back to the dawn of Christianity. The 4th century Algerian cleric Saint Augustine believed that seven was so special that it represented the entire universe. He described how seven embraced all created things. And ten was beyond even the universe because it was seven plus the three aspects of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Twelve was also hugely important, not simply because there are twelve tribes of Israel or twelve disciples of Jesus, but because twelve is divisible by one, two, three, four, six, and twelve itself, more than any other number around it. For St. Augustine, numbers had to come from God, because they obey laws that no man can change. Around 800 years after St. Augustine, the 12th century Chartres school also recognized their significance. It's thought that under their influence, sacred numbers were built into the structure of this majestic building. Numbers, they believed, held the key to the mystery of creation. I spent my entire working life studying numbers. And for me, they're more than just abstract entities. They describe the world around us. Although I don't share their religious beliefs, I can't help feeling something in common with the people who built this place. I share their awe and wonder at the beauty of numbers. For them, those numbers brought them closer to God, but I think they're important for another reason. Because I believe they're the key to making sense of our world. No matter where the circles are, no matter how big or small, 
they will always contain pi. It's this universality of the number pi which tells you that you've identified a piece of true code. In fact, if you get another number, it means that you haven't got a circle. In some sense, pi is the essence of circleness, distilled into the language of the code. And because circles and curves crop up again and again in nature, pi can be found all around us. It's in the gentle curve of a river, the sweep of a coastline, and the shifting patterns of the desert sands. Pi seems written into the structures and processes of our planet. The coastline, in geometric terms, said Mandelbrot, is a fractal.